Good evening, everyone. Um, I feel like I've got the graveyard slot here, so try and stay with me. Um, okay, for those of you who are not that familiar with the geography of Stellenbosch, I used a fancy tool called Google Maps um, to identify where Bruckner de Villiers is. Um, to me, it's quite interesting because uh, I'm an economist by background, um, and there's something called the Gini coefficient. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but essentially it measures the, the difference between uh, wealth. And what's most telling here is if you look a little bit to the right of Bruckner de Villiers, you can see the Delay Graph Estate, and if you were to go a little bit north from that, you would have a place called Takara. Essentially, you've got a couple of billionaires living on the hill overlooking a school, Bruckner de Villiers, which is actually... Um, although it has reasonable infrastructure, it's actually a very poor environment. And, th and that's one of the great tragedies of, of South Africa. Um, and, and I think it's a tragedy, but in it there's also a massive opportunity because I think Stellenbosch is a great, it's almost like a, I want to say, proof, what's proof class in, in, yeah. in English? Yeah, a, yeah it's, it's a testing ground for us to look at how we can solve the problem in Stellenbosch because if we can get it right here, then we can uh, transport whatever we create elsewhere in, in South Africa. Um, so uh, this is what the front gate of Bruckner de Villiers looks like. Um, it's a school that was built in the 1960s uh, by all accounts. Um, apparently it, it used to have over a thousand learners, but it's now a much so smaller school um, with around 300 learners and a staff complement of around 10. So it's, it's a small school compared to some of the other schools you've, you've looked at. Um, oh, we've lost a photo in one of our transitions. Ap apologies for that. So basically what I wanted to highlight with the photos was that um, it's a small school with reasonable infrastructure and um, the principal, Franklin, has done a, a great job of making the most of what, of what he has. So it looks well kept. Um, the this, this school is in reasonable condition. But the first time I attended there was just after 2 o'clock, and I noticed something very interesting. I saw, well, I don't know, let's call it 100 of the 300 children leaving the school on their own. Okay? Now, I, my children go to a school just down the road here. I can probably hit it if I throw over Akerstadt and hit um, Rhenish. But you, you see very few children walking home there. And I'm not saying that children should be necessarily escorted by their parents, but what I'm pointing at is there was a very different dynamic that I encountered at this school compared to what I would encounter at Rhenish, and that is the level of involvement of the parents. And this is the big problem that a principal like Franklin faces and principals like yourselves. If the parents aren't on board, then you're never going to achieve as much as you will achieve with, with the parents. Because... Learning and education doesn't begin when children start school. It begins when they're born. Um, so um, what are the key lessons I drew from my, my time with, with Franklin? And hopefully it's not just my, t my, my time isn't ending now, but like many business people, I think everyone's mentioned it, we, I came in with very, very lofty ambitions. Um, but the reality is the system is incredibly difficult to change. It starts with things like the parents... It, the, uh, unfortunately, the person from the Department of Education is, has left, but the Department of Education is, the pro is a problem in this in scenario. Um, sorry, okay, let me go back a bit. So there are a number of big factors. Teachers are a problem. You, it's r a real struggle to get high-quality teachers in some of these environments. The unions are a problem. What they call time on task is also a problem. So even if you've got good teachers, they don't have enough time during the, during the school year to actually affect the change that we want. So, so that is a massive problem. And a business person can't solve that. I mean, we need to be realistic. A business person cannot solve that problem. And the biggest reason for that is you can't scale time. So any of us as business people can't go in there and magically create 100 versions of ourselves that is somehow magically going to solve the problem. So the biggest thing a, a business person needs to realize is that you can't scale your own time. Therefore, um, sorry, these are the wrong way around, but essentially I've, I've described how hard change is and the fact that you can't scale time. We need to focus on the low-hanging fruit. And what seems like an ins inconsequential thing could actually make a massive difference in a school. 
So the only thing that I could think of doing was actually to, you know, um, like the uh, who wants to be a millionaire thing was to call a friend. So I had a friend who runs a program called, uh, she's from the Click Foundation, but they're running a program called Reading Eggs. And I knew that that was a very good program in terms of improving literacy and numeracy outcomes for, for young children. So I thought, well, let me just phone them and see if they've got capacity to go to the school. And sure enough, they could. So that one phone call, which was actually an email, but um, give me a poetic license, but essentially that one interaction that I could make made a much bigger difference than any of the time that I could have spent with the principal. So that was, that was one of the big lessons. So it's essentially about leveraging existing networks. It's about taking the knowledge you have and the, the cliche that it's not um, what you know, it's who you know, and using that to the, the, the biggest effect. Sorry. Impressive animation that you've introduced there, <laughs> but Okay, so, um, so I would encourage any of you to go and visit, any school that's running the Reading Eggs program, to go and visit it during a, a session when, when the kids are involved. So what you can't get here is, is the noise. So the interesting thing about the noise is that it's all the individuals responding to the computer program. So it's not noise in the sense that they responding to their peers, they're all just engaging with the computer program. But it's absolutely fascinating because they are so captivated by what's going on. So um, the, I had relatively little to do with this program. I was just connecting two dots and, and that was the, the key point here. But the program is, it's an Australian program, it's well proven and it's, it's actually a great thing, especially for children who's, who've missed some of the early literacy and numeracy foundations, which actually don't happen in, in grade one they actually happen, um, it's a continuum. So essentially you need to start teaching children um, literacy and numeracy foundations from about 12 months onwards. So the key thing was, this is doing a better job than I could have done with the principal because it's actually about um, helping learners catch up. Um, so, okay, in terms of thank yous, um, first of all, Tiens has done, played a fantastic role in, in, in the circle, but the, the thing that I've enjoyed the most is just the interactions we've had between partners and principals. I haven't attended every um, circle, but the ones that I have attended have been fantastic. The, the Time to Think workshop, as a business person, the Time to Think workshop was one of the best workshops that I've attended in my 15 odd years of working. Um, but just last, last Monday, we had uh, all the principals in at my office, and it was absolutely hilarious. Anthea was the, the uh, instigator of most of the hilarity. But after the meeting, as everyone walked out, everyone who works with me came up to me and said, what was going on? What was that? And no one believed me that it was a group of principals, because everyone thinks principals are like boring, you know, stay there. <laughs> but they showed that they, they have personality. I, I, my, my concern... I mean, it was, it was absolutely brilliant, but my concern is that you don't necessarily show that in a school environment. And I think that's what I would encourage you guys to do. Think about how do you translate the energy you showed in that meeting into the school environment, because I can... Okay. That, yeah, actually, the academic um, research is beginning to back this, but most children learn through having fun and engaging with stuff. It's not about these dare I say it, boring classroom structures. It's about how you engage the children. And I think teachers are the same. We're all, they're all humans. We need to find ways to engage with them and, and let them have fun at their jobs. And then I think we're going to have some success. So thank you.